Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Nick. Today I'm going to be talking about five amazing books that will help you get better at jazz guitar. So I just want to start off by saying that these books won't necessarily teach you how to play jazz guitar, but there will be a great assistance to learning jazz guitar. So it's not necessarily going to talk about the nuts and bolts of jazz as an idiom or like how to play shell voicings and stuff like that, but more like just general guitar and music theory things that will help you be better acquainted with the instrument and music in general. If you are looking for something like a beginning jazz thing, I got a playlist over here that's kind of like the jazz guitar essentials of videos that I made. You got videos like shell voicings or how to practice scales or how to improvise and stuff like that. So go check that out if you're a beginner. But as a jazz musician, I feel like improvisation and being flexible with the information you have is one of the most important things about the genre rather than like swing feel or technique or shell voicings and stuff like that. So I feel that these books are all really important. I also have some Amazon affiliate links down in the description if you're thinking about purchasing any of these books but yeah let's get right into it so the first book i have is a book called pumping nylon now this is more of like a classical guitar exercise book and i've talked about it in one of my videos on how to tap because i use the legato exercise uh, as an example but this book will really kind of help you get your fingers in the right place because it'll force you to play really uncomfortable things in a certain way that will inevitably help your technique there's also a youtube series where this dude is like at the gym which is kind of funny because pumping nylon haha <laughs> He goes through basically all the exercises and kind of shows you what's up. So this is one I definitely recommend just from a technical perspective, no matter what genre you're playing. But yeah, definitely check this one out, Pumping Nylon. The next book I have is called Fundamentals of Guitar, which was actually written by a jazz guitarist, Miles Okazaki. And I believe he has some background in graphic design. And I say this because all of his things are really graphically appealing and he does have like videos where he's kind of visually demonstrating some rhythmic concepts. And also this is a very visual book. If we look at this over here. These are the dyads. He checks out the dyads by planning them in a circle and he has all 12 points and he connects them. And he's like, these are all the possible dyads that we have. This goes through like the really nitty gritty things. This is 127 dyad fingerings. We have the interval trainer. Here's all the possible three note combinations and all the possible locations you can play on the guitar. In the beginning, he has this section, which is described as designed for a guitar based on the harmonic proportions of the string. And then he goes on to describe the scale length and instrument length. And then he says, labels show diameter of harmonic circles. And he talks about the fundamental, the second partial, the fourth partial. It looks like this. It's also very similar to the cover photo. And this book is actually broken down into two set parts. It has the first part, which is pitch, the second part, which is rhythm. So the first part is talking about all the options of pitch on the guitar. He's basically looking at everything from an objective point of view. So that way you can kind of cover all the ground possible on the guitar in terms of pitch. Then he has a section on rhythm, that's part two. And there's a lot of really interesting things about like how to use a pick and how your pick is your rhythmic motor. He also talks about paradiddles and how to incorporate drum rudiments onto your picking patterns and stuff like that. He also talks about polyposals, polyrhythms, like it goes really in detail. So I'd re really recommend this. I'm not sure if I would recommend it to a beginner, but I'd be really interested to see how a beginner takes this information because it's literally everything you need to know about the fundamentals of guitar. And to me, this is like music theory, what it's supposed to be, the theory of music and the theory of how the guitar works. So I'd recommend checking that out. And now onto the topic of rhythm, we have progressive steps to syncopation for the modern drummer. I actually have a video all about this book and how I practice with this book. But basically, it's just a bunch of rhythms. And normally drummers use this, there's two lines. The top line is like a certain rhythm and the bottom line is the more consistent rhythm, usually like quarter notes, but sometimes it breaks it up. And normally the way drummers practice with this is they'll have their regular 4-4 swing pattern and then they'll have the top line of the rhythm played on the snare or in another part. And you can actually like reverse the limbs. You can do a lot with it. But I find that it's really helpful for guitar and understanding rhythm. If you want to know more about it check out the video where i go more in detail about this and how i use it but basically there's a lot of ways to interpret it you can play both lines on the guitar at the same time or you can think of your foot as one line and you can think of the guitar as another line but that has really helped the rhythmic aspect of my playing and really helped put things in perspective and it's an all-around great book it's also really cheap it's sort of around between like five and seven dollars or something like that i think i paid five for it and it's just a great asset to have sometimes when i do sit at the drum kit and try to like play drums because i can't really play drums i look try to play some of this stuff and just kind of get it in my body in a different way the next book is one that i've referenced plenty 
Organic Music Theory by Ben Schwendener. And I always reference this book whenever I bring up modes because this book is sort of like the quintessential mode guide. Now, this book is based on the leading chromatic concept. And while it's not the actual textbook leading chromatic concept, I would actually recommend this a little more. Now, to give you some perspective, the leading chromatic concept was written in the 50s. Now, Ben Schwendener started working with George Russell in the 80s up until his death. And they were very close friends and they worked together and they developed the concept even further than what George originally did. So when you read the leading chromatic concept you're kind of reading George Russell's like this is my first presentation of this whereas Ben brings a new perspective of this is all I worked on with my 30 plus years working with George Russell and here is this information in a more palatable way in my opinion George uses a lot of like kind of like space age terms that are kind of made up like super vertical tonal gravity and doesn't really go into detail about explaining them but Ben has a really straightforward and easy to follow process that really helped me understand because I actually did read the leading chromatic concept before this book and I actually studied with Ben and that really like cleared everything up and everything made so much more sense once I did that and modal playing made so much more sense. I had a fairly good grasp on modal playing before but this kind of opened a new door and the possibilities. This book was also published in 2017 which is about 60 years away from when George Russell published the leading chromatic concept. So they're pretty different. So while Ben is not the original like kind of arbiter of the leading chromatic concept, he did spend a lot of time with this guy, worked really closely with this guy, and it's also taken all these years and kind of presented it as we know it today rather than its humble beginnings. And Ben, if you're watching this video, because I know you sometimes tune into these, thank you so much for watching this. And I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you sharing with me this book and everything that you've shared with me. And finally, there's like a section at the end where like Ben talks about some of the ways he's applied it in his life and how he's applied it to his teaching and playing and like musical examples and stuff like that. So it's, it's a really interesting read. It's kind of like a step-by-step -step thing. And then at the end, it's like, here's how I apply it. And ben was always super adamant about like the practicality of things. Like when you write a composition for my class, I want you to walk home with something that you can actually use, not like an exercise. I want it to be a piece of music, not an assignment. But anyway, finally, the last book I want to talk about is Harmonic Mechanisms for Guitar, Volume 1. Now, this book is sort of the bane of my existence, but it's helped me so much. It's a really frustrating book because it is two, 328 pages of just triads going up and down scales in every single key with very specific fingerings. And it's also written in sheet music. It's not the worst thing in the world. Like, you should be able to read music, I think, if you're playing jazz, because that's just kind of a part of the thing. Maybe not. You can probably get away with playing by ear. What do I know? But it's, like, a lot at the same time, and is reading some stuff that's probably unfamiliar to you. At least it was to me. Now, I've tried to get through this book, and I've never gotten through this book because it's so tedious. But basically, it's just different ways of playing triads and kind of an introduction to polyphony on guitar. This is kind of where I got a lot of my ideas from kind of extracting from this book. This was written by the great George Van Epps. And it's a lot of like, go up the C major scale with first inversion triads, go up the C major scale with this triad, but with really specific voicings. And he notates the fingerings on it. He'll put the numbers for each of the fingerings. And some of the fingerings are like really uncomfortable, but he does that to get you kind of acclimated to the kind of, like polyphonic type of playing like you'll have you do some uncomfortable bars so that way you have an extra finger so you can have some motion he eventually goes on to tell you about like how to have like an inner moving line within the triads and connecting them like having the top voice move and stuff like that so it's a really big shed in this book i've tried to approach it many different ways at some point i was like i'm gonna do a page a day i'm gonna work on a page a day and i i eventually gave up because this would take a whole year to do and i guess i might not be that motivated But anyway, great book. If you can manage to get through it, that'd be great. There's actually three volumes of this, so there's, I think, about a total of like a thousand pages, but I think the other volumes actually had more content, which is crazy to me. I heard a story somewhere on the internet a few years ago that Kurt Rosenkohl was like the only one to get through all the book, and if you know Kurt's playing, check out Reflections. He can play chords pretty well. So those are about all the books I have for you today. I just want to give one honorable shout out to this book, which is the Bach Sonatas and Partitas for Violin. And while I wouldn't consider this a book that gets you better jazz guitar, it's a great sight reading shed. And it also has a couple of lessons in here. Like for example, box voice leading is really nice for guitar. And there's a lot of kind of polyphonic stuff, but it's not as complicated as like the Bach dimensions, for example. So it's like kind of a way to get yourself playing chord melody in like a structured way. So if you've enjoyed this video, thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in purchasing any of these books, all of them are in the link in the description with affiliate links. And whenever you use those, it helps me out with the channel. So I'd really appreciate that. If you like these kind of videos, please like and subscribe. There's new videos coming to you every Monday and Thursday. And thanks so much for sticking around and I will see you next time.